Hello everyone, welcome to our video series of UVM training. In this video, I will explain what are UVM phases. We know that UVM is a methodology which comprises of system Verilog class libraries, which basically encapsulate various verification components like test, environment, monitor, driver, etc. Now, when we do verification using UVM, what all things must be done to complete this verification process? So there are different processes or tasks which should be completed, which should be done to complete this verification process. Like first, we should be create and connect the test bench components. We should configure these test bench components. We should run the test, like generate the stimulus. And final is we should uh, report uh, the results generated using these tests. Now the one question arises here is, do all these processes take place at the same time parallelly or at different times? If at different times, then in what order all these things execute? The answer is they all execute in a predefined order and that order is defined by UVM phases. So basically what UVM does is it divides all the processes required for verification into subgroups and based on the order execution puts them into some UVM phase. So based on the uh, UVM phase, these process lies in that order, order only, these process will be executed. So basically phases are like set of tasks or functions that each com UVM component execute in a specific predefined sequence. Now one question arises here is, why phasing is required in UVM? Why it was not earlier in traditional test, test benches which used Verilog? So the answer is in Verilog, we only had static components, static components like modules. And uh, the static components are created at the start of the simulation only. And they are created automatically. So whenever if we try to access these components, and do some operation on these components, then it is guaranteed that they have been initialized and there will be no issues in accessing them in any order. But in, U, but in UVM, this is not the case. Because UVM enabled the inclusion of OOPS concept also. And we know that using OOPS concept, we can create classes. And classes are dynamic components, like they can be created dynamically at any simulation time. So for suppose one example, we have test and environment component in our UVF test bench. Suppose one component is created at five nanosecond and the second component is created at 10 nanosecond. Now the component created at five nanosecond tries to access the component created at 10 nanoseconds before that itself. Then it will create issues. So there are possibilities that one component which is being created earlier might call a component which is not yet initialized. So what is the solution for that? The solution for that is synchronization between components. So the synchronization between component is achieved through phases. So through phases, what we will do is, first we will only create all the components. When all the components are created, then only we will move to the next phase, which is called connect phase, where we, where we can connect all the components. Similarly, it can move to further phases. So let's see what all phases are there in UVM. So uh, UVM has divided uh, the UVM phases into three categories. First is build time phases, second is runtime phases, and third is cleanup phases. In build time phases, we have phases like build phase, connect phase, end of elaboration, and start of simulation. So in build phase, all the test bench components are created and initialized. And after these are created, then only we can move to the next phase called connect phase, where these components will be connected. Now, after then, we will have end of elaboration and start of simulation phase, where we can configure our test bench and we can display the hierarchy in which these components are built using build phase. Now, after all these things are done, then we can move to the next phase called runtime phases. Now, run phase is the phase where actual stimulus generation activities happen, where the simulation consumes time. 
along with run phase these all four phases also execute parallel with run phase in the following order we'll explain more about these in next slides now after then we have cleanup phases in cleanup phases uh, the major operation of cleanup phases to extract information we get from the scoreboards in coverage and to check whether our test has passed or failed and whether all the coverage target is being meet, meeting or not now let's see these build time phases in more detail so as i told in build time phases we have first build phase so basically all the test bench components are built and their instances are created in this phase and other things that are done in build phase are like all the sub components and register models are instantiated and whatever the configuration values which we need to set and get using this field using config db are also done in this phase now our build phase execute in top to down manner top to down manner is first we have the test class in the upper hierarchy so first test class will be built inside the test class we have environment class then environment class will be built and when environment is built only then agent will be built but why is this so the answer is if we see that agent is defined inside environment so while building the agent environment should already be defined similarly in order to build environment test class which is one hierarchy above it has to be defined then only we can tell that environment is defined under under which which class so that's why we can only go from top to bottom so that's why build phase executes from top to down now we have connect phase in connect phase all the connections between all the components via tln ports and exports is done using uh, is done in connect phase and connect phase comes after build phase this is very logical because logically the first thing to be done is to create test bench components so that they can be connected together that is the reason for build phase to come before and the connect phase to come after that now when the connect phase is done then we have the next phase called an end of elaboration now if we want to do any final modifications to the structure or to the configuration or to the connections just before the simulation begins that can be done in this end of elaboration phase and it also executes in bottom to top execution approach like connect phase next we have start of simulation once end of elaboration is done start of simulation simulation phase this phase execute just before the simulation starts and this phase is basically used for debugging purpose only because using this phase uh, in this phase we can display component hierarchy and what all configuration information we have and all the build time phases are function that they consume zero time next we have run time phases run time phase is the main phase where actual simulation time is consumed so it is basically used to generate stimulus that is to generate test cases uh, and the run time phase is a task and it consumes times now we see that in build time phases some phases were uh, using top to down approach some were using bottom to top but in run time phases all the components will be executed parallelly and along with this run phase we have these phases which run parallel to the run phase so first we have reset phase with this reset phase we have one pre reset and post reset phase also pre reset phase executes before reset and post reset executes after reset so the major purpose of pre reset phase is it takes care of any activity that should be done before reset is executed like to check for any signal to go active before reset happens now the next phase is reset phase so reset phase is basically used for resetting the dut or our interface for example this phase would can be used to generate a reset signal and whenever the signal goes high it will put our dut or interface into its default state after the reset phase we have a post reset reset phase so the purpose of post reset phase is that it is used for any activity 
that should be done immediately after the reset then after these phases are complete then we move to the next phase configure phase with configure phase also we have one pre configure phase which comes before configure phase and one post configure phase the pre configure phase is reserved for those activities that should be done before this configure phase or you can say after this reset phase so the next is configure phase in the configure phase this is basically used to configure the dut and any associated memories in the test bench so that it ensures that they are prepared for the start of the test case after this configure phase we have a post configure phase the post configure phase is basically used to wait that the effects of the configuration has been applied to the dut so that it can move to the next phase called the main phase in the main phase also we have three phases first is pre main phase which executes before main phase and then we have post main phase which executes after main phase the pre main phase ensures that all the requirement components are ready to start generating stimulus now we have the main phase this is the phase where all the test case generation activities are done so this it basically generates stimulus and send it to the dut so it will only be completed when either all the stimulus are generated or if a timeout takes place now after this main phase we have a post main phase it is basically used to take care of any finalization of the main phase then we have a shutdown phase before this shutdown phase we have pre shutdown phase and then we have post shutdown phase in the pre shutdown phase pre shutdown phase you can consider it as a buffer also buffer for any dut stimulus that is still under process so if any stimulus is taking time in this pre shutdown phase they will get a buffer time now after this pre shutdown phase we have the shutdown phase which basically ensures that that the effect of the stimulus generation generated have been propagated through the dut it basically ensures that the stimulus we generated has been correctly applied to the dut or not and any resulting data has been processed and cleared or not so after this we have a post shutdown phase which basically performs any final activities before ex exiting the active simulation phases so the order of these runtime phases will be first we have pre reset reset then post it to reset then it will move to the pre configure configure and post configure and then to the main in main we have pre and post main and then to the pre main shutdown and post main after all these things are done and the run phase is completed then next we will move to the next phase called clean up phase so as i told earlier also clean up phase is basically used to extract all the information from the scoreboard and coverage which can be used to check whether our test has passed or failed in that also we have four phases first is extract phase extract phase will basically extract the information and process the information from scoreboards and functional coverage monitors after we have extract this information then we will move to the next phase called check phase in this phase using the scoreboard and coverage information we can check whether our behavior of duty was correct or not and it can also be used to spot any potential errors in duty or in test bench after this we have a report phase in this report phase it will be used for displaying the result of the simulation or we can uh, record these results in a file all these things are done in report phase after report phase is done then we'll move to our final phase so final phase is which where all the remaining task or action that the test bench has yet to complete will be done like it will close the files and finally terminate the simulation so these are about the uvm phases this is all for today's video thank you everyone for more such videos please like share and subscribe